Well, Cameroon's army, backed by a regional task force, has killed at least 100 members of the militant Islamist Boko Haram group and freed 900 people it had held hostage. The Cameroon Minister for Information, Esa Chiroma Bakari, said troops had conducted a sweep operation between November 26 and 28 along Cameroon's long border with its western neighbor, Nigeria. It was not immediately clear where the clashes with the militants had taken place or where Boko Haram's captives had been held. Meanwhile, Nigeria's Senate is discussing a draft bill which aims to banish anyone who propagates false information on electronic media. Many Nigerians have been expressing their anger with tweets using the hashtag not, uh, not to social uh, media bill to campaign against the proposal. Now, for more on what is happening in and around Nigeria, I'm joined by Andrew Palcheski, VOA's social media engagement analyst, and Ali Mustafa, managing editor, House of Service. Gentlemen, welcome to Africa 54. Thanks. Thank you. Sir. Now, let's begin with this report uh, from uh, Cameroon, or the border area between Cameroon and Nigeria. What more do you know about this operation and about what has happened to those 900 rescued people? Well, what we know so far, Vincent, is that this incident took place about three, four days ago in what they call far north, uh, northern Cameroon section of the country. And um, as you indicated, um, over 100 Boko Haram militants were killed and uh, close to 1,000 people were rescued. Um, what I think is significant in this incident is that uh, Boko Haram is slowly but surely expanding its operations. It's been in those parts of uh, Africa already, but it's beginning to shift focus and attention away from Nigeria. There hasn't been any major mm -hmm. coordinated Boko Haram attack in Nigeria. Is, is it because they're being squeezed hard, or is it that they just want to expand? Well, you know, uh, President Mahmoud Buhari has set a December deadline yeah, to yeah. defeat Boko Haram, and yeah. uh, the big question on everybody's lives in Nigeria is, will this be achieved? The fact that Boko Haram has been unable or unwilling mm -hmm. to conduct any major coordinated operations in Nigeria and is instead venturing out yeah. is giving the indication that it might be working, that that, that that effort on the part of the Nigerian government might be paying dividends. Be now, uh, Andrew, in, let's switch gears here and talk about social media. What do you make of this? What is behind this bill? Well, the fascinating thing about this is that had the government maybe done this a little quieter and hadn't put out this bill, it might not have gotten the social media reaction. But by putting out this bill, they kind of set off this global response. And it isn't just in Nigeria. It's across Africa and around the world yeah. that people are using that hashtag, hashtag no to social media bill. A lot of people saying, don't they have anything better to do? Of course, exactly. with Boko Haram, there are other issues that they say are more pressing. Other people saying, how are they going to enforce this? They're saying yeah. people aren't allowed to use text messages to send these things. How are they going to monitor that? And does this lead to an invasion on free speech? Yeah. And, and, and again, there's that ambiguity about uh, the, what they call false information. What is false information? Exactly. There's a lot of questions about yeah. how they would enforce this, what those words mean. And a lot of people are just really concerned that uh, the government is going to invade into their social media, invade into their free speech. And in other instances where this has happened in other countries, we've seen similar responses. So it's really not a surprise that the people are striking back. And I wouldn't be surprised if uh, the power of the people ended up winning at the end of the day. Yes. Very quickly, uh, Aliu, given the kind of goodwill uh, that uh, Mr. Buhari has received so far, could this be a kind of a negative to his government or this is seen isolatedly you know as a the social Senate media thing, thing? yes uh, well you know in nigeria they are saying the the lawmakers are personally affected by the effect of the social media and that is why it is uh, they are taking this action in particular they point out to certain senators within the national assembly yeah. who have been victims of the social media so the, it's personal and uh, people are beginning to think this is personal yeah. and uh, the big question is how do you even enforce yes. such a bill yes. um, uh, there have been such attempts in places like yeah. niger but what they did was not to introduce bills they just jammed to the social media and just made it impossible for people Andrew, to can anybody okay. really stop social media I, I don't think so i think this is evidence that you can't uh, yeah. and one of the, my favorite tweets that i saw yeah. somebody said if you don't have thick skin and you can't take the criticism don't go into politics exactly <laughs> so they better just stay either stay away from politics or stay clean exactly i think so exactly right. you know gentlemen andrew leo uh, thank you very much uh, for coming in and giving some of your in uh, this insights on this issue. Thank you very much. Well, Andrew uh, Polcheski is a social media engagement analyst and Aliyu Mustafa is managing editor, House of Service.
Well, we want to know what you think about Africa 54 and the stories we cover during the conversation on Facebook. The address is Africa 54 and check out our headlines 24-7 on voaafrica.com. Find me on Twitter at VOA Vince McCory.